Hanun Hor, Yevort Voy of Hokfuin, Sepo Amen. Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear beloved in Christ, if we were listening carefully to the epistle letter uh, read, uh, read today from the epistle of St. Paul to the church in Galatia, we heard once again a profound message of uh, liberty proclaimed to uh, the people in Galatia and what the responsibility of liberty means for them as Christians, as newborn children of God, no longer under uh, the control of the elemental spirits, no longer under the authority of the civil law, because as children of God, they live the life of, uh, that God calls them to, empowers and enables them to live through the seal of the Holy Spirit. In the letter to the Colossians, St. Paul says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs of, from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Last night, as a last-minute thing, I went on a date with my daughter, Elizabeth. And uh, the date was uh, involving the thing that the two of us probably love the most, or one of the things that we love to do together the most. And we went to a hockey game. We went to uh, the, the dunk, and we watched the first game of the Providence Bruins against the uh, Bridgeport uh, Islanders. It didn't matter who was playing for us because we're a fan of neither. But they announced on the scoreboard at the beginning of the game, which was a full house, uh, that it was the first game played by the Providence Bruins in something like 548 days. So it felt to us like being freed. Uh, we were captive, you know, being fans of the sport and loving nothing more than to be at a live hockey game with the crowd and uh, the cool air with a huge megaton block of ice in front of us to watch the fastest game on two feet. Um, but we realized, oh my gosh, it had been a year and a half since a game had been played in this arena. The last time I was there, I was getting a COVID test, for heaven's sakes. Uh, so it was very exciting. I felt freed. I felt like the shackles were off. But an ironic thing happened. First of all, I was going crazy trying to find proof of vaccination because I thought when you went, you had to show proof of vaccination. Uh, I couldn't find my, my uh, documents from the hospital. I never got a card. I never got a COVID card because um, I got mine so early that they didn't even have cards back then. So uh, I, I have this document that the hospital gave me before I traveled, but I couldn't find it. So I thought, oh, well. And then we got there, and sure enough, people walked in, just the regular way, full house. Most people weren't even, most people weren't wearing masks, and they didn't ask anything about vaccine. I thought, wow, I really, truly feel free. But then there I was wearing my mask. Uh, while I, uh, when I sat down, the lady sitting next to me says, you know, you don't have to wear your mask. <laughs> and I said, you know, I also don't have to have a beer. I also don't have to have a hot dog. I also don't have to be at the game. But I decided out of my free choice to come to the game. I decided out of my free choice to have a 20 ounce uh, Corona uh, beer. I also decide out of my free choice to have a hot dog, which I should never eat because it's full of sodium and God knows what else, which can't be good for me. But I had a good time, and I also chose to wear a mask. I don't have a sign saying why I'm wearing a mask. I don't need one. If I want to wear one, I'll wear one, even if she didn't want to. But it, I didn't say much. I said, oh, oh thank you, and I just kept it on. Um, and it was ironic to me. I thought, wow. Here, people are telling you what to do either way. Wear your mask, and now they're saying, you don't have to wear your mask. Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. I'm a Christian. I'm free. And I really felt that last night. It was funny. I, I don't know if this resonates with everyone, but to me it was like, a, like a, an inner sign of, you know, we're kind of like almost through this or over this or whatever. 
So apologetically, uh, I'm going to do the very thing that I promised some many months ago that I wouldn't do, um, but only to illustrate the point, uh, and that is to mention that, uh, that, that, that horrible word, pandemic, again, and COVID-19. Uh, we can all attest to the fact that the last year or so has been tiring and difficult, and a devastation, not only for the world, but also for our church. And, and I, we see it. Uh, you know, attendance, trying to get the youth together, Sunday school attendance, and so on. It's just tough. Like last week at fellowship, I'm so glad that we have our fellowship hour, but very few people are sticking around and uh, to, to, you know, to, to greet each other, uh, to say hello, to have a cup of coffee. And this is a real disappointment for me. I like nothing more than to sit down with people, to talk, to laugh, to share, um, and to, to, to hear how they're doing. Are they happy? Are they sad? What's going on? So on. And, and we feel deprived of that. But so it's, it's still there, but, you know, it's getting better. But we as a church are trying to, uh, you know, be a family, be what we're called to be, uh, to be the children of God, the fellowship of the faithful and the body of Christ. We ought to be able to see in retrospect clearly how pandemic and our reaction as a species, as human beings, has in some, uh, has, has in some ways sown a terrible dystopic fracture in the social fabric worldwide. The fact that that woman turns to me and, and advises me what I should be wearing or not is proof to me of that. That would never have happened before. Fatalities, illness, extreme restrictions, mandates, regulations, social distancing, political turmoil have all become all part of a world in times of pandemic. And the cost to society, especially for the eldest and most vulnerable, has been the greatest. While we have all begun to grow accustomed to the new reality, recognizing that COVID-19 is likely here to stay, in spite of the fact that, thank God, here in Rhode Island, uh, we have, a, you know, uh, the, the boldness uh, of our government to actually, uh, you know, go against the trend in some of the other northeast states and, you know, allow us this liberty, uh, uh, thank God. Um, And so, therefore, the symptoms and the challenges uh, are becoming increasingly manageable as the science struggles to catch up while we near greater immunity. In our own community, we've suffered the loss of so many vital and integral members of our community and have felt the physiological, social, and spiritual impact of, in our uh, worshiping community, not only locally but in churches throughout our diocese and throughout the land and the world. The church is, after all, in essence and uh, in character social, as I said. It is a collective of individuals united in Christ, incorporated by baptism into his body. You might have noticed that, uh, and we were talking about this last week with a couple of fine uh, ladies of our parish, um, that our senior citizens group has been devastated over the past year. And um, it, it's, it seemed like the darkest day, recognizing that, you know, we, for all intents and purposes, they, you know, the gathering of this Monday morning, which so many people are accustomed to, uh, has ended. And so, actually, today we have a meeting to, to, to discuss the reopening of our Senior Citizens Fellowship on Monday morning. So, you'll be hearing more about that uh, specifically as an organized uh, uh, ministry of our church uh, in this week's mail. I, I, I promise that. Um, so from the beginning, we know that it is not good for man to be alone, as God says in Genesis chapter 2. Because from creation, our tri-personal and triune God made us in his image in order to be in him and to live in relationship with him. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as well as, therefore, with each other. This is why it is my opinion that the division, discord, isolation, separation, and even death due to the pandemic has been of demonic origin at worst, or at best some of our reactions to it have been. And shame on us. As a world community, and especially in America, we seem to have become more distrusting and hateful at a time when we should have been united as we would have had uh, had we been attacked by an invading force, as happened uh, 20 years ago. Uh, we even see some people almost out of desperation and fear grow comfortable with their isolation and separation from others, even their church, and commune with Christ, replacing real live and in-person relationships with a shadowing virtual image. As Christians, we are called to work together, uh, work things out together in harmony and in unison. In fact, you might say liturgically. With one voice, heart, and soul, and with mind of, uh, the mind of Christ, we are called to assemble in a side, 
to worship with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. We even proclaim this. The deacon even commands this during the Badrak. Sarbos Asatsek. How does it go? I, I can say it loud. Say chant it. It's easier. It's okay, boys. Yes. So we, we even command this during the liturgy. This past summer, however, I've been particularly pleased uh, of church attendance, which has concretely started to grow, and that people have begun to take a more active life in everyday activities, especially where spiritu- spirituality is concerned. Uh, we're going to be launching Bible study soon, too. And that's another concern of mine, because the last time around, before pandemic, uh, it was formerly Deacon Michael, now Dead Harutun and I, were doing week- weekly Bible study, and we weren't getting more than three to five people a week. And that was really discouraging to me. And it kind of tells me something about the spiritual state of our community. And this is a problem shared by a lot of churches. So we're very hopeful and prayerful that, uh, you know, that Bible study gatherings will not be a waste of time uh, for us, but will be uh, bear fruit in the growing faith of our people. The numbers of those receiving communion has been growing. Um, steadily, and this has been a delight to me and has brought great motivation to my ministry. Thankfully, our church found a way to struggle through our time of isolation, utilizing technologies and other means by which to remain in contact. But thanks be to God, we're at the point where human ingenuity has allowed us to cope and to mitigate the threat of disease so that now we've been able to ease into a less stringent world where the church has once again become what it is, all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Faithfully, the start of this full season has been seen a return to class, Armenian school and Sunday school, as well as youth activities. We have a a live and in-person retreat uh, next Saturday. Our various ministries are increasingly held in person, and we're holding our full-scale annual church events with great confidence and care. All of this flows from our Christian understanding that, apart from Christ, we can do nothing, as says John the Apostle. The church is none other than the body of Christ, in which every Christian is called to have fellowship in the holy things. Serputun serpots. Specifically, in Christ himself. Everything that we do, therefore, as a church and all that we are as a community begins and culminates with our fellowship united together at the Badrak, at the Lord's table, worshiping him. Because only in him we live and move and have our being, as teaches St. Paul in the, uh, I'm sorry, in, in the book of Acts. It is a time to Be bold, brave, and united, not only in spirit, but in person. Pardon the pun. I'm praying so fervently and trusting the Lord even more greatly that we will be drawn together to step out of the darkness and into the light in order to become together as a church stronger and more loving than before. Last night, with this full crowd at the hockey game, which Providence incidentally won, you should have heard the crowd. I haven't heard anything that loud in a year and a half. So this was uh, very exciting to me, and I would love to hear that same enthusiasm and fervor of us as the body of Christ. If a group of hockey fans uh, can be that loud, shouldn't Christians shout with joy even more loudly, singing psalms of praise and, and psalms and spiritual songs? This is the time to engage We are at the beginning of the new fall season and we should be inspired by new hope to be present with each other and with our church in the presence of Almighty God. Dear beloved in Christ, I bless all of you and praise Almighty God for this new beginning and the growing confidence that we have in him and in our fellowship, leaving you with the wonderful news of C.S. Lewis who wrote, Christians are like coals of fire. Together they glow, apart they grow cold. Please stand.